Okay, in this video I just want to work on a couple exam style questions for protein structure and um, you'll have to bear with my terrible handwriting but let's jump right into it. The first question says how does the primary structure of proteins ultimately determine its biological function? So we're asking how does the primary structure which is the sequence of amino acids ultimately determine its biological function? Okay, so the thing to remember here is that form form follows function so form follows function that's the first thing to remember the primary structure so that so I guess what I should say here is that I should tell you what that means that form follows function and what that means is that the primary structure the primary structure ultimately determines the tertiary and quaternary structures. So form follows function, the primary structure ultimately determines the tertiary and quaternary structures and what this means in layman's terms is it ultimately determines its three-dimensional shape so or what the protein looks like so I'll say or what the protein looks like and the 3D shape of protein determines the function so determines the functional role of the protein okay so this I think would constitute a complete answer so if I were asked how does the primary structure of proteins ultimately determine its biological function I would say first that form follows function then I would say the primary structure ultimately determines the tertiary and quaternary structure so remember the tertiary, tertiary and quaternary structures the tertiary structure refers to the three-dimensional arrangement of the atoms including the side chains so not only the backbone atoms but the side chains as well and the quaternary structure is a three-dimensional arrangement of um, multiple subunits or the arrangement of multiple subunits associated in three-dimensional space. So the primary structure ultimately determines the tertiary and quaternary structure or what the protein looks like and the 3D shape of the protein determines the functional role of the, pro of the protein. So you know you just gotta remember that it's the 3D shape ultimately determines the function. So not a, not a terribly difficult question, one that you should get all the points for. So moving on to the second question. Now this one is a bit strange and actually was one of the ones that tripped me up along the way. So I figured we'd go over it here. And it says proteins that span biological membranes often contain alpha helices. Given that the inside of the membranes are highly hydrophobic, predict what type of amino acids would be found in such a helix. Why is the alpha helix particularly suitable? for the existence for existence in the interior of a membrane so there's a couple of questions that they want us to answer here the first one says predict what type of amino acids would be found in such a helix so if I was going to predict what type of amino acids would be found in such a helix um, I really would it's actually really the answer is given in the question um, we know that the membranes are highly hydrophobic so what that tells me is that hydrophobic so hydrophobic residues would make up the membrane spanning 
region of the helix. So the hydrophobic residues would make up the membrane spanning region of the helix. So let me just get this back on here and give myself a little more space to finish this question. Okay. So they asked us first to predict what type of amino acids would be found in such a helix. And we said that hydrophobic residues would make up the membrane spanning region of the helix. So when I say spanning, I, maybe I should have pointed this out before, but spanning means the alpha helix is actually going through the membrane. So the helix is going through the membrane. And that's exactly why we need hydrophobic residues to um, make up the part of the helix that's in contact with the membrane. Because if you recall, membranes are highly hydrophobic. It says it in the question. It says the inside of membranes are highly hydrophobic. So we know it's highly hydrophobic. We want hydrophobic am amino acid residues on the alpha helix so that they can positively interact with the hydrophobic environment. So that's why we want to have hydrophobic residues. Now, the reason helices are useful in crossing the membrane, that actually has to do with the hydrogen bonding arrangement. So if I were to say why helices are useful, in spanning biological membranes, I would say the backbone, so we're now talking about the backbone, so the backbone hydrogen bonding capable residues so backbone hydrogen bonding capable residues are involved in forming the helix are involved in forming the helix so if any of the backbone were not in such a structural motif there would be hydrogen bonding capable residues within the membrane lacking partners which would actually destabilize the interaction. So the important point to remember is that all of the hydrogen bonding capable atoms in the alpha helix are forming hydrogen bonds. So all of the all of the hydrogen bonding capable residues are forming hydrogen bonds in the alpha helix. So there's no unpaired hydrogen bonding groups. And that's what actually leads to the increased stability. If there was an unpaired hydrogen bonding group, a group capable of forming hydrogen bonds, then you would essentially destabilize this interaction. So you'd be that would cause a destabilizing interaction, which you do not want in this case. So that's the reason that alpha helices are really good for spanning biological membranes. So there's a part B and a part C to this same question. And if my camera will focus on it, we'll talk about it. It says, draw an example showing the interaction that is most important in stabilizing the helix. Well, that's what we just talked about. We talked about that the hydrogen bonding atoms, that each one has a um, part that we have. Any hydrogen bonding atom is forming a hydrogen bond in the alpha helix. So the most important interaction is H bonding, let me rewrite that, H bonding in the backbone. So the most important, so the most important interaction is H bonding in the backbone. And if I were to draw a little thing of that, I would do something like this, just for the exam, or draw something like that. And I would maybe say, here's my nitrogen here's my hydrogen so this is the amino end or the or the end terminal and then up here I would say okay I have a C double bond O and this would form a hydrogen bond just like that and that's all you'd have to show to get full credit I mean just to show that you understand that the hydrogen bonding is occurring between the N and the carbonyl group of the fourth amino acid residue so that's about it for that question. We'll move on to the last one. And it says, how would the amino acid composition change if, in, if instead of a single helix passing through, the membrane, several helices are associated with the membrane? So now they're asking, instead of having one helice 
or helix going through rather the membrane we'd have multiple going through now in this case you'll just have to remember that the helice would need to be amphipathic so what I mean by amphipathic is that one side of the helix would have hydrophobic residues and the other side would have hydrophilic residues so the first thing I would say is the helices would need to be and I would say amphipathic so they need to be amphipathic and I would say one side of the helix would be hydrophobic and the other side would consist of hydrophilic residues and basically the reason for this the reason it would have to be amphipathic is that we would want the hydrophobic portions of the helices to be interacting with the membrane because remember we're still spanning a membrane here so the membrane's still hydrophobic and you still need to have hydrophobic residues that can interact with the um, hydrophobic environment be it in this case the membrane but if I had two helices next to each other so if I had you know these two alpha helices whatever they look something like this next to each other and I want them to associate with each other meaning I want to have positive I want to have positive interactions between these two helices that are both spanning the membrane over here this is where we want the hydrophobic because this is going through the membrane portion over here but in the middle here and here I want hydrophilic so I want hydrophilic residues in the middle so that I can have positive interactions between these two helices and that's why the alpha, these two alpha helices would have to be these two alpha helices would have to be amphipathic so that's basically the answer right there and um, that's about all I want to cover for this video, so thanks.